we can get that going. All right, so welcome to my screen. And uh, let me just sort of find it and get myself into Parish Online, which is up here somewhere. Can we do this? There we go. So Parish Online is 100% cloud-based. So all you need to get into it is your browser, which is great because you can means you can use it from uh, your smartphone for some things. So if you're trying to record parish assets, or sorry, town assets in your case, you can go out and photograph them. It'll stick them straight into Parish Online for you. Um, so when it starts, it automatically starts where you are purporting to be. So in, in your case, it'll open up in Froom. In my case, it opens up in Long Sutton. Uh, and it always starts hugely irritatingly to me with the boundary lines are. Uh, but what you're getting on the right hand side of the screen is the Ordnance Survey's high definition uh, digital map of the UK. And you can see the entire country from here. You're not restricted to your own area. You can go wherever you like. Um, the only thing is that if you start adding bits of information to other people's parishes, um, they won't be able to see it. The only person who can see it is you. So if you're really interested in finding out what you think the um, allotments in Yorkshire look like, that's all very well, but <laughs> it's not of any use to anybody else but you. So that's one thing I would say is, is privacy, that whatever you put into your system is only available to people who can log into your system. No one else sees it. Um, on the left hand side is a changeable column at the moment it's showing the various layers of data that you can overlay on top of the digital map um, and we'll go into those in more details at the moment but each of these lines represents a collection of layers underneath so you can click on a little arrow and expand it and delete it and you turn layers on or off by toggling them so if i say i really don't like these boundaries i can go down to the boundaries administrative and stick down to the parishes and just turn them off. And that's the same for everything. You toggle anywhere in a layer uh, to turn something on, you toggle it off again, um, and then we can do other things. So basically, this is like any old digital map. You can zoom in to get more detail. And the more you zoom in, the more detail you get. So eventually you end up with every single house visible and all the addresses. And you can say if addresses are important to you, you can just turn them on. So if I want to have the addresses for everywhere in Long Sutton, every house now has a dot. Click on a dot, and this is what's known as location-based data. So whatever you click on, that's what appears in the left-hand side. So your left-hand column is now changed to the data entry that you selected and the one that you selected is highlighted in blue. Uh, and this is true for the whole way that Parish Online works. So the system comes with hundreds of layers of data. Um, if I zoom out a little bit, turn off the addresses, um, just want, this is just so for effect. And then if I go up to say here, you can use a search button to find what you're looking for, because you can never remember where hundreds of columns of data are. So if I'm interested in flooding, because we're in the levels down here, we can go down to the environment agency and say, show me what happens around here when zone three floods occur when it rains. And you wait for a second and all of a sudden everything disappears underwater. So for those of you who are interested in planning, um, you can turn on any layer that uh, is applicable to a planning application. So you can do flooding, you can get uh, grade two listed houses, you can get conservation areas, you can get sites of special scientific interest, almost Ramsars, anything that planning people are fussed about is available here. Um, the, the maps you can get, uh, what you're seeing here is just a plain forward sort of topographical map, sorry, not topographical, but um, you can say, uh, what I want to see instead is, is the topography. You know, are we on a hill? Are we on a level? Whatever we are, you can just turn that on as an available layer up here in the base layer. So turn off the flooding, go back up, uh, turn this off. And if you go into um, here, you can see all the various choices that you get. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff on topography. 
So, in, in, but that's neither here nor there. What we're just doing at the moment is showing you what's available. Uh, the system comes with a built-in asset register, which is, let me just turn all this down so we can see where we're going. Under here, and under here, basically the system is set up so that all the normal assets that the town or parish council needs to record and keep track of um, are already built in here as the infrastructure. So all you need to do is actually add the data and the points where they are. Let me just turn off this blue thing that's uh, puzzling me where it's coming from. I've got something on that I didn't mean to turn on. That one, okay. So in the asset register, you've got these main categories and the classic one is you know, most um, parishes or towns own buildings of some sort. So you can turn the layer on and you can just see that immediately two icons pop up in Long Sutton. And just an example, I'll click on this one and bring up the column of data associated with it. And this is basically uh, our village pump that someone's put a brick building behind. And all the usual stuff that you need to keep track of, like how much is it going to cost to replace if somebody knocks it down? Uh, what are we going to insure it for? How often do we inspect it? What were the results of the last inspection? You can add any attachments to a record in Parish Online. So I've got a couple of photographs here to show you what it looks like. If I click on the photograph, it downloads it and you can just say, um, save it under downloads and take a look at it. Uh, sorry, all your pictures are in the way. Let me just move those. There we go. Then if I go into downloads, all your pictures are in the way. <laughs> there we go. I can't delete where you go. There we go. So if I take a look at the downloads, I get myself so lost. All right, so here is our pump house. And just a little village pump with a 15,000 pounds worth of building around it. But you can build up a, a track record, if you will, so that any insurance company can say, yes, you had an inspection frequency of once every six months. And, and lo and behold, we can see that you reported every six months for the past six years. So we know that you're doing good governance which is wonderful when it comes time to uh, coping with insurance claims. And people say, you know, we grandma fell off a park bench and it, is, it was rotten and therefore it's your fault and you should pay for her broken hip. Um, and you can go back and say, well, actually we took a picture of it six months ago, just before we painted it. Here's a picture before, here's a picture after, and you can see it was in perfect condition. So nice try grandma, but no success. Or, or whatever it happens to be, there are all sorts of things. Um, one of the items I do like about Parish Online is what they call geolocation. So if you've got this uh, pump house listed in your asset register, you can then go out with your telephone, smartphone, go out to the pump house, take a photograph of it, and then put it straight into Parish Online, and it comes up here like uh, we've just seen with this particular one. So if I come out of here and close this down if I can get out of here. Right. Um, so in the asset register, you can cover all sorts of things. Um, building contents tend to be things like, uh, again, items that you own as a, as a town, town council. Uh, people always want to know where defibrillators are. So I've turned ours on um, and you can instantly see them. You can turn off the buildings. And there's one on the town hall here, and there's one in our next door village in Knoll. And again, you should click on them, you get the details of when they're inspected, how much they cost, when they were last used, that sort of thing, all good stuff. And you can arrange, run that all over the entire um, asset list for the council. Um, so the, the business of the asset register is it's, it's constant across the whole country, so you can't change the infrastructure. What you do is just add to the data, um, but the, the infrastructure is based upon uh, 10 years of experience of the sorts of information that councils need to record. 
so most of it's there but if you need to record stuff that isn't in the asset register then you can have your own parish layers that you create yourself and in here you can put anything um, so we track footpaths certainly planning applications are a major item if i turn on them for last year you can see that they uh, all appear up here you can color code them so their color indicates what state they're in so a green one has passed a red one has, has failed purple one is still under discussion uh, and again same principle you click on any one of these and the data record changes you can see the whole thing and then uh, useful for people you can put a link in so this is the link to that particular page in the uh, local planning authorities portal so here is that particular document you can see every document uh, that you want to associate it with that house or that particular application so for those of you who are into planning, um, we're really grateful for this sort of facility because it's, it's great to, for, for parish councils to work out what is wrong or right with a particular application. Let's go back to Parish Online. I'm just going to look at my notes to see what you need to see. Oh, yes, measurements are very helpful. Let me come on and turn off the planning applications. But... For those of you who uh, need to do measurements and so forth, we can go down to, uh, let's say, playground area in Long Sutton. And I just pop that up because you, it's clear to see. But if it's important to you for any purposes, like you're going to resurface it or you want a contractor to mow the grass or whatever, it's a simple matter of turning on a tool to measure. You say, I want to measure area, start in the top corner, click, come down to the bottom corner, click, change. Every time you click, you can change direction. And when I finished, I double click and it tells me that I've got a thousand meters or square. And you can do the same for distance, which is really great if you're looking after footpaths and you want to say, uh, we've got people who want a two kilometer path or a five kilometer path or a 10 kilometer path. You can measure the lengths of your footpaths and produce them like that. All the information within Parish Online is visible or exportable um, in spreadsheet form. So everything you put in here is exportable back out again, um, which is really useful uh, for things like, say, as an example, I use COVID-19. If you have all the houses that you want uh, people who need help having medicines picked up or food or whatever, you can color code them all in, in say, yellow. Then you color code in green, all the volunteers are willing to help. And it's a real piece of cake to put the nearest green to the nearest yellow. And you've got the addresses already. Uh, you just put people in touch with each other. Uh, so it was very simple to manage a thing like that um, in Parish Online. Uh, the usual things that people need are, can you show me where, where are the various uh, footpaths around you, for instance? And you, they've got no idea. So you can, uh, any information you have in here is printable um, in various ways. So if we just say we want to print, it immediately comes up with a square of what you're going to print and you can adjust this. You sort of say, I didn't want that bit, I want that bit, or I want to see rather more. Um, and then when you've got the information you want, you just click on the print button. Having selected a title and a description, you can put in um, the legend of the color codes needed a north arrow, if that helps, just print. It whirls away to itself and then says, here I am. What you get is a framed picture so that you've got the Ordnance Survey's copyright notes in the bottom corner. And then you've got your own notes as to what the title was and the description, which I left out, but who, who? And now you can just either print this out on a piece of paper on, the, on a printer, or you can use it as an electronic PDF form and just send it to anyone you want. Possibly, I think the most appealing and uh, productive part of uh, Parish Online is what they call public maps. And basically anything you've got in here, you can produce as essentially a URL that you can send out to people and they can then use it to click on the information that they want as if they were inside Parish Online. So it's best shown as an example, if I, uh, create a new file, let's close down there, close down there, close down there. 
can go into here. So this is something that um, Stigursi produced. As you know, Stigursi is the home of Hinkley Point. Hinkley Point came along, but Hinkley Point is here, and they said, in order to help compensate you for the mess that we're making of your lives, we'd like to upgrade one of your footpaths. And just think how nice it would be if this footpath was um, all nicely smooth tarmac, you know, that the mothers can push their prams along there, the children can roller skate or go on scooters, the adults can cycle. Um, we'd like to do that. And everyone thought it was a marvellous idea. And they were about to say, yes, OK, when the parish clerk said, hang on a minute, there may be other things you need to think about. So bear in mind now, this is just a website address uh, that's been exported from Parish Online. So he's using this for demonstration purposes. He says, have you considered what we need to think about in terms of Ramsar? So if I show the Ramsar area, then the path that you're suggesting to choose is right in the middle of a Ramsar and you have to start taking all their requirements into account. Um, have you thought about sites of special scientific interest? because again, that footpath is slam bang in the middle of an SSSI. And so they went on with all of these things. But what I'm trying to show you is that the general public can turn on and off layers of information that you've made available to them uh, to sort out what they want to see. And if uh, in the case of planning applications, you can say, uh, we'll do this sort of thing, but we'll throw in instead, um, overhead photographs. So if I do our housing, that we do those planning applications uh, with that. So bear in mind that you're now downloading from the internet, but you're getting all of that stuff that I was showing you earlier, and you can turn on the ones you want to see. So we're interested in, not in 2021, nor in the instructions, but we just want to see the 2022 planning applications, nothing appears, but if we zoom in, all of a sudden it starts making sense. And again, you're just giving this to the general public as a browser that they can see uh, on any computer. And again, the clicks to say what this is still works. If they click on there, up comes the old database on the left-hand side. So you can put this on your website, you can put this uh, out in an email to any interested party, uh, you can cover almost everything that you wish in terms of publishing the data from within Parish Online, so it's available to whatever audience you want to give it. And of course, if they turn off all the layers, then they have a beautiful um, overhead photograph of their local area, which they can move around, zoom in, zoom out, just as if they had access to the system themselves. So that's that one. Um, going back to here, let me just go through what I haven't shown you. I think that's probably everything you want to know. There are all sorts of videos that um, Parish Online themselves put out for everyone. We've gathered them together. When I say we, there's a, a, a Parish Online user group which exists to try and help people make more use of the system. Um, it's a very complicated website called Parish Online User Group, very difficult to remember, but uh, it sort of lists all the videos that they've put together. If I just say, oh, I didn't mean that one, sorry. Let's go back to here and change to the user group. So, for instance, the videos, <clears throat> they list everything here in, uh, <laughs> let's try again. Oh, well, never use a live system to show you, but basically you can um, see all the videos that they've been put out uh, from within Parish Online, and it lists them in terms of how long they're for. You know, if you've only got a spare minute, you choose one of the one minute videos if you've got 40 uh, you can check accordingly. We've also listed all the things that we've done in the past that can be helpful. I should mention to you that Parish Online themselves on their website have a wonderful facility, I think, called case studies. So basically, this is what anyone else across the country has done with the system. So 
if you are interested in, uh, let's just say, land and property, you can click there and you can see what other, other councils have done with the system. And the beauty of these is each of these is a step-by-step -step guide to how they got there. So you can see what they ended up with, but you can also see how they achieved it, which is very helpful if that's what you want to do. And then I think that's really my basic runaround. I did have a little thing to show you, um, if you wish, if you have a second, if I can get there. I think the easiest way to start again. Nope. Not that one. It's that one. Not that one either. The other one. Right, here we are. So if I can turn this into a slideshow from the current slide. So this is just examples of the sorts of things that you might want to do with the system uh, once you get the hang of putting in layers. So just bring in, you know, if you're interested in dwellings, uh, if you're planning things, what is the density of the housing, that sort of stuff. Um, then we started tying it in with uh, climate change for those of you who are interested in that. So that you can say, so which roofs within our town are suitable for putting solar panels on? And the system just takes a look at uh, all the, the south facing buildings, if you will, and the ones that don't yet have solar panels and you can color code them accordingly. Uh, so this is bringing in information from third parties in this country, in this case, a country called Energio, sorry, a company called Energio, but I'm trying to show what's possible. So you can take a look uh, of all the houses that have already got solar panels on the roofs and those that haven't and target them accordingly with policies. Um, simple things like using artificial intelligence to say, Houses which have got their own driveways can put their own uh, electric vehicle charging points in their driveways. So what we need to do is highlight those houses without driveways, say this lot, and put them close to a car park and we can put charging points in the car park. And then anyone within the yellow radius is able to bring their car to the car park to charge it. That's just that sort of thing that you know, all you planners may find interesting. Uh, those houses which are suitable for heat pumps. And so it goes. Really, the whole point is just to show you that there's very little that you cannot do with the system. Uh, it's just a matter of, of bringing in the data together. Uh, so that's really um, the runaround. Um, I hope it's it's been helpful. I'm going to stop sharing now and see if there's anything else that people want or whether... Um, we've been quick enough because Paul, you said you had half an hour and that was it. Uh, there's certainly lots of um, other things I can show if anyone has any specific instances. Um, do, do I understand it that this is um, the intro to a 30-day to a trial? Is, is that right? So, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah you, just, questions, you have but... a copy. You can do all of the things that I've shown with this. Um, and uh, that there are... That user group that I showed you, there's a help page on there that brings up the main uh, page of Parish Online. And then you click on any of the menus and it tells you how to use them. So it's basically an introduction for brand cool. new people. Yeah. Um, but town planners, um, the local one near us, Glastonbury, use Parish Online hugely effectively for things like, I don't know, the, the Lord Mayor's procession, which streets are going to be shut, which ones are going to go one way just for the duration. And then they can publish that and put it up on notice boards or on the village, the town website, whatever it happens to be. So lots of ad hoc stuff, short term stuff, as well as long term things. And then um, in your case, in Somerset, we're working quite hard with the Somerset County Council for them to produce the data that they're collecting. So um, all the footpaths in Somerset are visible as a result of uh, the SCC. Uh, we're trying to work with South Somerset District Council who've got a copy of XMAP, which is the big brother to Parish Online. And we're saying, uh, why don't you output all the planning applications directly in XMAP? 
because then we don't have to do anything. They're already there inside Parish Online. So yes, feel free for the next 30 days, Paul, to play with whatever you will. Um, by all means, give a shout to me if I can help you. There is um, in the user group something called a banter group that gets together at three o'clock on Friday afternoons. And anyone can just drop in and say, could you show me how to do this? I'm stuck on that. Uh, it's just a quick way of getting a solution for free from people who are A, used to the product and B, are themselves parish, town, councillors or clerks. So they understand what it is that you're trying to do and why you want to do it and probably have already done it themselves. The people use uh, parish online for neighbourhood plants, for um, anything basically that needs mapping done. Can I just come in and ask a little bit? Sorry, I missed your preamble. I was about yep. three minutes late. Um, can I just ask about demographic data and uh, more people-based uh, data, and talking in terms of engagements rather than um, strict mapping? How is this suitable and able to be used for projects such as that, or is it just strictly a mapping tool? I'm going to... Well, I'm just going to say thank you, Graham, very much. I'm going to have to go now. But, okay, Paul. Um, well, I hope it's been helpful. Yes, and uh, I've got lots of questions that I hope to answer on the 30-day trial. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Good. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Okay, anyway, Rachel, um, could you clarify for me a bit more the, the sort of capture information you want to capture? Well, I suppose we're, it's just a bit more people-based rather than uh, mapping-based, but obviously people are in locations, and so there's obviously a crossover there. So we might go and do an engagement in a public, in a park and open space. We might want to collect data from people, and we might want to find out who those people are and where they where they have come from where they are on, on the where they've who uses the space for example where they come from in room all of these things might be useful and i just was just wondering if there was space for that information oh, yeah, within you the map any information you like oh, yeah. and store it in your own parish layers so okay. you, you might create a layer that says name location uh, point of view on this or, or why am i using that what would I like to see in the park? That sort of thing. Okay. And you can capture all of that. And then you can export it and use it as a spreadsheet or however it helps you to use the data. But what you're really looking to do is to present it visually. So that you, you might show, for instance, that you've, you've interviewed 100 people and 50 of them want a cricket pitch, 60 of them want a rugby pitch, and all the children want a bigger, larger playground area. And then you can you can color code the results accordingly, or you can display the results in size. You know, a circle of this size represents the people who want the cricket pitch, and the circle of that size wants the people who'd rather have roses in the garden than daffodils, whatever it happens to be. Okay, okay. So everything that you showed us uh, previously in the thing is information that's already loaded on the system. Is that um, right? In, in the layers of information that are there, they're all provided by third party uh, people like the Environment Agency or Heritage England or whatever it happens to be. So you, your list of grade two listed houses, for instance, has come from a third party. It's their data. You can't okay. change it, but you can display it. But you can capture any of your own data in a parish layer. Maybe it's easier if I show it to you. So I'm going to go back and share the screen, go into parish online. turn it on and if I say I want to create a new layer so I'm going to just add a new layer and this is going to be which uh, we're going to create you can create a layer that's either points lines or polygons in your case you're talking about a park so let's have a park um, and sorry I'm just I keep getting your photographs in the way. There we go. Uh, and then you, you choose the columns of data that you want to gather. So you might say, I want a person's name. And then you might say, I want to know, uh, I, that's some information you probably want to know their age. You probably, you may wish to know their gender. Um, 
And then you may say, for instance, um, let's have one that's called preference. And you can say, do they want flowers? Do they want shrubs? Do they want concrete? Let's hope not. No, I'm just being crap. <laughs> But and then you can collect all this data together. And when you've got it all, you say, I'm, I'm done. And then the, it's added the layer for us all the way down at the bottom. So we have to go down and find Rachel's layer, which is going to be there. And now we're going to say, let's add a record. So we're going to add a feature. And here you can start recording everything that you asked. And when you got to preference, they could only answer flowers, shrubs, or concrete. But if someone said, oh, what I really want is a cycle path, you can put in a cycle path. Okay. And could we upload that data from a spreadsheet? I'm just thinking about being out and about collecting the data. Quite often we'll use a form or a something. Can we upload yes, the data? The, it's, that is arguably the most frequently requested feature. And they haven't done it yet. They're okay. working on it, but at the moment, importing from a spreadsheet is not available. So there would be, so we'd have to data entry. It, it's, it's really tedious. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. No, uh, okay. If you have a big spreadsheet, they will do it for you. But the big problem with spreadsheets usually is that people don't record the location. You know, this is a location-based system. It's a map. And if you've been out in the park, then it needs to sort of show that you've been to the park. And yeah. that's fine if you've got a location for the park, but every record that you are entering into Parish Online has to have some location data to it. Yeah. But if you gathered, you know, 2,000 answers, you could send those to Parish Online and say, please, would you import these? And they all have exactly the same location. And that answers their problem. But the, the big problem with spreadsheets is they usually don't have any location data on them. Okay. Got lots of hands raised. Rachel, have I answered yours for the moment? Yeah, I think okay. you have. For the Let's moment. go on to Sarah. Yeah, Rachel started one that I had. So the answer is, can you import data? That's no. Um, has anyone ever attached a questionnaire to it? So if we were able to put out a, a questionnaire link and they completed the data online, if, if Rachel's data said Eggford Park, and the options were type of user. Has that ever been done? Um, I will have to find out for you. I don't know, Sarah. It's um, probably not common then at the moment. I don't think so. That's we fine. Go through the case histories and have a look. It's That's not fine. one that I've been familiar with, but then uh, I live in a very small parish, so I don't necessarily come up with the sorts of things that you do. No, that's great. Um, it was good to hear you say that third parties enter lots of data. So Jane probably already knows this. Um, is planning data ones that we'd have to enter individually, or is it already added by Mendip and soon to be Somerset? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ongoing discussion with the various districts and the unitary as to how we're going to do this. Um, we, of course, would like them all to be using the, the uh, their GISs to export the data straight to us. So. Uh, let me start by saying this is a, glo a geographical information system. It uses all the standard formats. So anything that your Mendit Council is storing can be exported straight into Parish Online. It's just a question of getting the, the right person in Mendit to do that. So Parish Online has a, a big brother system called XMAP, which they make freely available to district councils to help the export of data. And they will actually, Geosphere, uh, the, parent, the company behind this, will do all the work. So I know they've been trying, um, Stratton on the Foss has been trying really hard for years to get Mendit to export their data to straight into Parish Online. And, and we hope that we're on the, the verge of a breakthrough. <laughs> but okay. um, bas basically, uh, if the council is willing, then the ability is there, but it all depends upon the district council. Okay, thanks. There was uh, one other thing before I give someone, someone else. Um, GDPR, are we able to add two sets of data and have one 
publicly viewable and one only privately viewable? Absolutely, yes. It's a great question. And yes, it's a major concern, but absolutely. Thank you. So moving on to Nikki. Thanks, Graham. I think you kind of answered my first question about creating our own maps, because I can think of loads of uses um, for my area of work in terms of we could map um, recycling points around town, we could map shops that have got plastic free status, et cetera, all on kind of Absolutely, one map. Yes. Yeah, that's um, yep. And then we could share that on our website. So that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking we might find it useful for. Um, but then I was thinking about how we bring in other data sets. Um, so I've mentioned this to you already, I think. So we're developing a walking and cycling infrastructure plan, and there's a loaded kind of external data set. So there's the propensity to cycle tool, there's Strava data, there's um, bikeability data. And I was wondering how, if they are GIS based, how easy it is to kind of pull those in um, if they're not on there already um, and kind of overlay them with each other. The, the, it's a, a, the people at Geosphere are really, really helpful. Um, you can ask them, say, why don't you talk to such and such a company because we'd like to import their data. Yeah. And uh, they do that all the time. So all the photo, the overhead photography, for instance, comes in from Blue Sky, um, who are sort of responsible for doing that for the country. Um, and they will work with, with anybody who's willing to work with them. Okay. And, and again, Geosphere do all the work. There's really very little work involved for the host of the data. It's just a matter of saying, yes, you can have access for three minutes to get the links in that you want, and then the links run forevermore. Great. So, yeah, simple. Thank you. So Jane, coming up, you got your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, we already have um, a, a digital map base that, that I use, um, Pair Technology. Um, yeah, the cemetery what I, basically. Yeah, what, what I use that mostly for is people say, can I have a, a map showing me a road closure or, um, you know, how... Um, where various things can be laid out yeah. um, and I do that by actually cutting out a section of the map because it's only it's only a temporary thing it's not it's not something I want to keep in a layer so does this system have the ability to cut out a section of the map um, yes yeah perfect yeah, yeah you you have under the tools listing which I think my screen is still on sorry let me turn that off tools listing there's Let's close that one as well. Now we can get there. Wrong table. <laughs> Deary me. Try that one. There's a thing called annotate, and you can annotate whatever you like and just export that. And that's it's a one time only thing, or you can repeat it a, a month later, whatever you want. But the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, pair technology is, is quite friendly with geosphere so they so if if you've got information within pair that you want to import into geosphere into parish online they'll do that for you great thank you anyone else that's got questions that i haven't answered yet has this been helpful does it sort of give you all a, a way to go it's been really helpful graham thank you um Good. yeah i can just see, see obviously as you said there's hundreds of different data sets to look at. So I guess over the next 30 days, we can all take a look and see what we might find most useful and how we might want to use it. Um, and yeah. Well, do, do, do please look, use um, the user group website can be helpful. And I run all sorts of training courses uh, on a regular basis, um, either uh, ad hoc to whatever it is that you want to discuss, or there are group sessions where anyone in the country can join in. Um, and they run from the very basic levels up to quite complicated ones, depending on what it is that people want to do. So if, if you find that you'd like to have um, further introduction to it, I'm very happy to, to help out. Just get in touch. That's excellent, thank you. Yeah, maybe if we will take a week or two to play around, we'll probably have further questions and things. So maybe we'll yeah. want another session or something. Great, well, I, I do recommend the banter sessions on Fridays. Great. Um, which you can get to through the user group, just register, just drop in, ask a question and drop out again. But yeah. there are a bunch of people, the usual suspects, I think, of, are there, very experienced and usually very familiar with what it is you're trying to do and can find you a faster way of doing it. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, it's been lovely to meet you all. Thank you very much for your time. 
And uh, would you like me to send you the recording or to Nikki? Yes, please. That'd be really helpful. And I'll share okay. it with um, Chris, who wasn't able to come. OK, good. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Graham, very much. Take care. Bye bye. Is, it, is everyone able to stay on for a minute? Yes. Great. Right. Thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll leave, but I won't shut you down then. Oh, thank you. Uh, if I can stop that, and I'll go and I'll just leave. Take Thanks, care. Bye-bye.